So yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the, um, the humanized mice, and, and before to give a kind of introduction on the uh, viral hepatitis that I'm working with and why we use the humanized mice. So this is a little bit of my outline. You can see that um, where I will talk a little bit about chronic infection, what are actually the major uh, therapeutic goals and the challenges that we are still facing cases in this HPV and HDV research in particular, and why actually using this type of human liver chimeric mice as infection models, we have the opportunity to address some at least of these open questions. So, and moving on, we'll give you some example, actually what we have done. So kind of lesson learned that we are still learning about both the role of specific host restriction factors in the sustaining the CCC DNA activity, so the HPV reservoir, and also the impact of cell division, of human hepatocyte cell division for the persistence of these viruses. A little bit of general, I have the feeling there is not much work on the, on the HPV, HDV um, uh, here at, uh, at present. <clears throat> so, Definitely chronic viral hepatitis uh, represents one of the major communicable disease. If you look at the data of the, uh, the WHO, it's already estimating that we have uh, more than 1 million, 1.3 million death per year uh, because of viral hepatitis. And what is impressing is that the tendency is going in the wrong direction, the number of the mortality increasing, also in comparison to other big killer. And um, only hepatitis B alone is already responsible for around 880,000 deaths uh, per year. So big challenges still. That's why the WHO also, also called for the hepatitis elimination by 2030. Doing what? Trying to scale up prevention because not forget we have a prophylactic vaccine is working well. So vaccine more. Um, to diagnosis, to have uh, to increase, uh, to find the so-called missing number, and also to assess, uh, um, to give uh, treatment, at least available treatment, uh, the, like the polymerase inhibitor, which are already doing a lot of good stuff. Um, so that's why we're still with this kind of high number of people that are chronically resistantly infected um, with HPV. And we know that the chronic infection with hepatitis B virus really lead to liver cirrhosis and a very high risk um, associated with the high risk of hepatocellular carcinoma uh, development. So, but why is the virus persistence? From a virological perspective, you can perspective, we can say that the, the persistence is caused by the maintenance of the viral reservoir, the so-called uh, CCC DNA mini chromosomes that you can see here um, in the nuclear of the hepatocytes. And on the other way, because the immune system appear exhausted and we don't have efficient uh, virus specific immune responses able to um, to fade, to really uh, eliminate the infection. So we have polymerase inhibitor, which efficiently suppress viral replication. You can see this step, I'm coming in also in a minute, more in detail, but um, these are drugs that do not affect uh, the CCC DNA and other uh, production of, uh, of viral antigens. So practically this is a gives a clinical improvement. So they are very important drug uh, to control the disease, but we have long, uh, generally lifelong uh, treatments necessary. Uh, there, because of the characteristic of the chronic infection, resolution is really rarely achieved spontaneously. And also with the therapy that we have uh, um, available. That practically we only interfere on alpha as a finite cure uh, approved, but uh, the rate of success is very low. So once again, without going to detail, but the, the virus uh, um, needs uh, the NTCP receptor. So we have a bile acid transporter that permits the virus to enter the hepatocytes. And this determines the space specificity and the organ specificity of this virus. It's a very small DNA virus. It's a unique genome uh, from conformation. You have a relaxed circular DNA. Um, which is uh, somehow with a very complicated process conveying to the nucleus and the host is actually, the host enzymes are building 
uh, the, the so-called mini chromosome, the CCC DNA, which is a covalently closed circular DNA, so it's an episome. It's like a plasmid as that associate with uh, <clears throat> histone and non-histone proteins. From this molecule, from this reservoir, all the virals RNA are produced. So genomic RNA for the production of envelope particle and subviral particle, and also the so-called pre and overlaying pregenomic RNAs. This is from this RNA, the polymerase, the core, the capsid protein are produced, and it also serves as a, as, a, as a template for the reverse transcription to produce new DNA viruses. So other way around of HIV, we can somehow think about. So um, the reverse transcription happened in the nucleocapsid, and this is exactly the step that I was mentioning, is blocked, is targeted by polymerase inhibitors. But you can see nicely here that the, uh, the, all the RNA are still produced and there is not much efficacy of these drugs on the CCC DNA. Um, another point, so the virus, the, um, the capsid then are enveloped through multivesicular, using multivesicular body and ER pathway, so the cells is not destroyed, is not killed. And what is peculiar here is that the virus doesn't need this for the viral replication, but integration of HPV DNA fragment occur. And this represents a big problem because also more and more actually we know that this sequence can also produce viral proteins. So short story, we still see that the maintenance of the CCC DNA is the real problem from the virological perspective and to have a real cure would means to get rid of, uh, of the CCC DNA. But what does more realistic major goal um, uh, that we have as current uh, therapeutics or strategy that we can uh, follow? Of obviously to reduce inflammation, prevent development of HCC, which already with the NOOPS can, we can do a lot. It's good and should be increased, but also more realistic goal is to achieve a kind of sustained suppression of HPV DNA varemia of treatment, post-treatment, which means also with the loss of production of S antigens plus minus zero conversion. So it's a situation that is called uh, currently as functional cure. But even to achieve a functional cure, very likely we will need to have substantial reduction of the CCC DNA and reduce also the activity of this molecule. And on the other way, recover, have a kind of boosting immune responses. So there is only between virolog virologists and immunologists discussing what is the most important aspect to to follow. But many studies are telling us that actually if we have a higher load of CCC DNA, the relapse is more likely. And if we have low level of CCC DNA, actually the, the increase uh, sustained value response of treatment can occur. So this is the situation chronic hepatitis B. Not all problems come alone. So we can say if you have a problem, another can be added. Yes, the chronic hepatitis D infection, it's something that come off can come on top of chronic HPV infection. And we have uh, an almost 20 million people, if the estimation are corrected, is not entirely clear, of people that are also chronically infected with hepatitis D virus worldwide. This, and we know that if we have a chronic hepatitis B infection and uh, HDV super infection occurs, we really have, uh, this leads to uh, the most severe type of chronic viral hepatitis that we know with acceleration of uh, liver deterioration, liver cirrhosis, decompensation, and hepatocellular carcinoma. Just very briefly, what is this virus? It's also a very interesting virus because it's a very small RNA virus, uh, single strand, negative single strand. It produces only just one antigen, the delta antigen, in a large and small form. But what is peculiar of this virus, it, it, it uses the envelope protein of HPV, you can see it also here, to enter into the hepatocyte, so it used the NTCP receptor, the same receptor, and also to get out of the cells again. So that's why it's a kind of, it's a satellite uh, virus. Um, but it's also, since it's so small, it doesn't have a, its own polymerase, uh, one or coding for other protein, it's also very hard to target, to develop treatment against this virus, this is so aggressive. 
And you can see it even here, so it used the same receptor. It builds an antigenome, so we have a G from a genome, an antigenome, I don't go here into the detail, from this antigenome, RNA are produced, and again, it get the envelope of HPV to get out of the cell again. Interferon alpha is the classical treatment indication for hepatitis delta virus, so B and D for infection. Uh, as the only treatment option till very recently, um, now a kind of game changer has been the introduction of uh, bulivertide as an entry inhibitor. And I can tell you a little bit later because it's also in our research somehow um, adds a lot of implication how we can observe what this entry inhibitor, what are the consequences of using this entry inhibitor for HPV, HDV in a chronic infection. And so actually, and I can I can already tell you this is a very interesting story born from academic. So the Stefan Urban in Heidelberg in Germany actually developed uh, the um, this entry inhibitor. What he observed that he was studying the mechanisms how the virus HPV entered into the hepatocytes, and he observed that a, a, a small a lipopeptide, a myristylated short peptide, which is actually derived from the envelope protein of HPV from the pre s ones so from the large envelope of HPV. Actually, this peptide, when used in the culture, it blocks the entry of the virus into the cells. And they've done a lot of study, also in collaboration with him, also in the humanized mice. And, and more and more now, bulivertide, um, the formerly known as Microdex B, this uh, peptide, actually represents now the first-in-class entry inhibitor that block uh, these viruses, and it has been investigated in a lot of preclinical and also even now clinical trials. And in 2020, it uh, received conditionally uh, approved by the EMA for the treatment of chronic hepatitis delta. But now let's go to the more the research part aspect. So what are actually the key open biological question in HPV and HDV research. Well, I was mentioning the CCC DNA for HPV. Actually, we still don't know what is the half-life really of this molecule. And also we kind of drug of factor, host factor, drug intervention in general can actually really destabilize this uh, molecule or uh, silence this molecule. And regarding the Delta virus, we can say almost the same. What is the persistence of a Delta virus even alone in the hepatocytes? And again, which factor can destabilize this virus that it replicates in the nucleus as well? And I was mentioning the role of viral integration in protein production. This is also something that we don't know exactly how, in which term this in which circumstances this really represent um, a huge problem, not only because of viral product, protein production, but also because having random integration, it means also genome instability. We have limited availability of robust infection model. That's the problem where the chimpanzees mm, don't work really with chimpanzees. And we have a replication model, but because of the host restriction, we don't have real animal model to work, uh, the infection model to work with these viruses. And the availability of liver tissues from patients is also very limited since this is an invasive procedure. So the compromise, as always, we have to cope with in science to come up with the humanized mice to monitor infection spread in CCC DNA metabolism and also to, we, to value somehow the impact of hepatocytes to over and in the, for this, for the persistence of these viruses, and of course for preclinical drug investigation. So, what are human liver chimeric mice? Uh, these are well established models that are in part are still in development. So, we're 20 years uh, somehow that we are working with these mice. There are many common features. Actually, this, all these models, regardless of which one somehow you pick, they are actually based on a basic principle. You need to have either the expression of a toxic transgene, hepatotoxic transgene, like in the UPA model, or you have to have a kind of the production of toxic metabolite, like in the tyrosinemia model, to induce death damage of the endogenous murine hepatocytes, because this is necessary to make the, the, the required space 
for healthy hepatocytes to engraft and repopulate the mouse liver. And if you talk about xenogenic hepatocytes, like human hepatocytes, you need to have immune deficiency. So we need to compromise again to have immune deficient mice, uh, lucky Bt and NK cells in some cases uh, to, uh, to work with this animal. So having a closer look, I move on with the UPE mice because this is the model that I know very well I'm working with. So this is a kind of liver, how it looks in the young animal. Um, they are back rows for several generations, of course, with different type of immune deficiency, and so that we have uh, interleukin to gamma deficiency, skip page background. What we do actually, we mainly work with cryopreserved human hepatocytes, and we inject into the spleen of the young animal because then the liver still needs to expand. And this is a super, this, uh, the, the presence of the UPA transgene induces subacute liver failure in the young animal. So in the early weeks of life, we transplant the hepatocytes. We can monitor using human hepatocytes marker that they go from the spleen very rapidly to the liver and they infiltrate the liver parenchyma in, in the week, months, around two months, they need to expand and to reach um, um, the fully repopulation level. This is not kind of non-controlled expansion. When the liver is an adult liver, then it stops the proliferation because we are not putting new tumor cells. These are primary human hepatocytes. The, the beauty is that actually the expression of hepatocyte-specific enzyme receptor, like the NTCP, etc., are well preserved in the mice, so, the, um, so in the human hepatocytes in the mice. And we observed also formation of cell junction between human hepatocytes and also between human and mouse hepatocytes. So practically what you, we have, these are a bunch of mice that we have generated in Hamburg. We don't observe actually differences uh, um, contrast to other groups, we don't observe difference. It doesn't matter if we use the female or male, or male um, mice, we can use them all to transplant. And we have a high level of uh, so human albumin. And you can see that anything above two milligram of per milliliter of human albumin, we have a very nice level of repopulation somehow. And at this point, when everything is done, we can infect the mice. We can infect the mice with HPV, with HPV and then HDV or together, or also infection with hepatitis C virus and hepatitis E or hepatitis E virus, which lately also we are doing, or we're doing again. Um, so now let's focus on HPV. Since what is interesting is that even if we have an immune deficiency, we inject the virus, we see we can monitor the amount of CCCD in the liver. It takes really a week to, to have an established 10 pool of CCC DNA. And you can maybe see here on the screen is better to see. If you do RNA in situ hybridization, you have you hit at the beginning very few hepatocytes. And from so the infection is really coming from the spreading of the of the virus from in the human hepatocytes. At the end of the, again, like two months are needed, we have nearly all human hepatocytes are positive for core antigen and HPV RNA in the liver. And indeed there is a good correlation between the amount of CCC DNA and uh, pre-genomic RNA, so our viral RNA. But we want to try to target the CCC DNA. So what type of approaches we might think of using to target the CCC DNA? And of course, you can think about using um, gene editing tools, uh, epigenetic therapy to silence. These are kind of heavy drug, I would say. We are talking about chronic hepatitis B. We're not talking about really cancer patients. Um, actually, there have been a lot of works in the last uh, um, six, seven years. And it has been observed that the, like Chris Cass technology approach can actually quite efficiently inactivate the CCDNA, but a lot of mutation, mutated form of this molecule have been documented with deletion, insertion, um, in-frame mutation. In a recent study from the group of Fabien Zulin in, Lo in Lyon also show actually that this mutated CCDNA might be still transcriptionally active. 
So it's, uh, I think there are actually a lot of safety uh, issue uh, with using this in off target also um, affected it need to be considered uh, with these uh, approaches uh, and besides in vivo delivery that needs to be very efficacy. Um, so let's try to focus and I will focus for the rest of, of the, my presentation more on, on mainly on two aspects on still to understand the effect of chemokine like interferon, what actually they doing on the virus, not only as immunomodulatory substances, and also the impact of uh, cell division. So um, actually, you have to be really aware that interferon, especially pegylate interferon alpha, is really heavy kind of dual effect. We always talk about uh, of uh, interferon as immunomodulatory, agents, but actually it has a kind of antiviral effect in telephone. And in, the, in this immune deficient model, what we observe, the chronically infected mice, we have a clear reduction of the protein, viral protein, the, the envelope, so the S antigen, other antigen, the core, the core stain is, is dramatically reduced using several, after several weeks of interferon. And we could, uh, as good as we, were able at the time also uh, see that we have a reduction both of pre-genomic RNA and of other subgenomic RNA. So all markers are reduced and prolonged uh, treatment is also reducing the amount of CCC DNA actually in the liver of these uh, mice. Interesting and in different type of study from us, from other groups, especially um, um, in uh, from Massimo Lebrero and different groups actually have shown that actually the acetylation status of histone that are bound to the CCC DNA appear to be reduced upon interferon alpha treatment. So there is a kind of epigenetic silence, which occurs with um, also with treatment with interferon. But the exact mode of action, it's not clear. It was even now we don't know exactly what type of epigenetic changes are happening are happening. But we learned a lot in the last years, actually, because I have to shortly introduce a new component, a host factor. This is the so-called SMAC56, how we call it, but as the structural maintenance of cro chromosome complex. In this complex, actually, it has been observed that it is degraded in the presence of uh, HBV. You can appreciate here, this is a complex that is actually colocalized with nuclear domains, with the PML protein in the nucleus of the cells. And when it's present, when the virus is in these uh, cells, it has been observed as in vitro that this uh, component is completely disappearing. And uh, what is the, actually this complex? This complex has been shown to be involved in chromosome stabilization DNA repair. It recognizes unusual DNA configuration, double strand circular DNA, that would be the CCC DNA actually, and to promote maybe compaction of these um, um, mini chromosomes. Well, if this is true, what actually it has been observed, the very elegant work that has been done now some years ago from the group from the Corsier, that actually the X protein, it bounds TDB1, it bounds a DNA damage protein, promote the uh, assembly and the recruitment on the on a ubiquitin ligase complex to induce ubiquitination and proteasome mediated degradation of this complex. So complicated story, but at the end, we see that we have for the first time observed a host factor a cellular host factor that is really so that the virus impact in such a dramatic way because the X is like entirely degrading um, this factor. And this has been observed that this uh, complex can promote the silence, the suppression of the CCC DNA, at least using mutant X deficient viruses. So based on this, of course, we looked in our mice and we realized that we have an infected liver. These are all core staining. Uninfected liver, we have a lot of, one of the components, MAC6. In infected liver, it's practically nearly disappeared and we have just the core staining, okay? So it's very, very strong effect. Now, with this information, we, say, we ask ourselves, it means also some treatment. 
which we know reduce, must reduce the level of HPV transcript, of actually this treatment might also abrogate X production of the HPV X protein and so promote the comeback of this complex and silence the CCC DNA. You can see here, and actually we have, I'll just show you this, uh, this graph. If we have with interferon reduction of all the RNA, but of course the question is also the, the smaller X RNA is also reduced, was not very clear. We started the easy way, I would say. We want to reduce the transcript of HBV, then why not to use an RNA interference strategy? So we use an approach that's also used in the clinical trial, now a kind of strategy, targeting all transcript. You can see that this virus is so small and there are a lot of overlapping RNA that is uses for the different protein production. So targeting this region, you have X, you have the pregenome, you have uh, the envelope, uh, the RNA producing envelope protein, it's uh, all RNA. So using this approach, we do see reduction of uh, serum uh, of uh, envelope protein in serum. We do see reduction of X, actually, um, nearly abrogation of X. If you look at histology, we have RNA in situ hybridization, untreated mice, a lot of HPV transcript, and with the four weeks of, it, of RNA interference over CRNA, we have a SMAC56 coming back in a lot of cells and a strongly reduced uh, um, HPV RNA level, right? But the CCCNA didn't change as a level, as amount in the liver of these mice, which was not very surprising. Um, so, but what was interesting to see, we have done some chip analysis on the CCC DNA and used a component, this NSE4 is a component of the complex, and observed the clear recruitment on the CCC DNA and the enrichment of this complex on the CCC DNA in the liver of this mice that were treated with cRNA, okay? So we can say that in this cRNA enabled the reappearance of the smac 5 6 complex, the recruitment on the CCC DNA and suppression of CCC DNA transcription. So now we have a new type of information. We can say that a cRNA approach, RNA interferences approach that target the viral transcript have dual mode of action. We have HPV RNA degradation as expected from CRNA, but also indirectly promote the silencing of the CCC DNA because X is not there anymore as much F6 comes back. Okay. What was interesting also here is that some of the mice we left untreated. We didn't kill them all after four weeks. We left them untreated and we observed the uh, follow up. The virus was back because the cystinia was there and we not, didn't achieve silencing 100% in all hepatocytes. But if we use the, the entry inhibitor in a group of mice for eight weeks, we added the, the bulivertide, um, the entry inhibitor. And what we can see in this picture. In some cells, we have again HPV RNA coming up because suppression probably was not 100%. But we could protect the, some of the human hepatocytes where silencing appears to be 100%. So not preserving, limiting, hindering, blocking new infection events, it seems that we could maintain suppression in some of the hepatocytes that in the first place could really silence completely the CCC DNA, or where all CCC DNA were silenced maybe. The same things to make the story short, we observe with interferon alpha, pegylate interferon alpha. Because you can see maybe here on this, uh, in this, um, histological immunostochemistry and immune flu, um, RNA to RNA in situ, actually we combine here, is combined immune fluorescent RNA um, in situ. We have uh, untreated mice, a lot of RNA, then we treat with interferon for six weeks. We have again a lot of smac viruses coming back, not all over, but in a good fraction of the hepatocytes. And if we stop the treatment, the virus is simply back. But if we add an entry inhibitor, we have a very good maintenance of the silencing. And uh, okay, and these are just the the the, the, the xRNA that is also is, is much strongly reduced. Also in in 
in mice that were maintained um, the first received six weeks of interferon and then further weeks with the uh, uh, entry inhibitor. And you can see with the chip that we could, in most of the CCC DNA, it seems that we maintain the SMAC on, on the CCC DNA. So to sum up this work, uh, actually we have seen that the kind of therapeutic shutdown, we can call it, of HBV transcript actually promotes the reappearance of SMAC56 a complex and silencing of a high proportion of the CCC DNA. But and in the, if we add an entry inhibitor, it seems that we can maintain, at least in part, the silencing. So in other words, the, to protect the hepatocyte from reinfection events, might maintain um, the suppression of the CCC DNA. And in general, this type of study tell us again that actually targeting the X protein, the regulatory X protein of the virus is uh, becoming more kind of uh, targeting approach, uh, possible game changer in the therapy uh, of chronic uh, HPV. But it's very difficult. We have a follow-up, we have a uh, we couldn't really silence the cysnia maybe in the classical way. If you think about it, actually, but probably this uh, complex promotes a kind of physical contraction of the supercoil DNA, which occurs also very rapidly. But is this a classic epigenetic suppression? Probably not. We have very, very preliminary data and also other people working in this direction that at least uh, we didn't observe a real change in the classical post-translational modification of histones that are associated with the CCC DNA. So it's a kind of fast shutdown, but it's not a classical epigenetic. And this they have to keep in mind when we stop the treatment. So I would like to move on on uh, another aspect. We do this study in relatively in models that are fully repopulated where the viruses doesn't cause a lot of damage. So what does it mean? Is that we have a relatively quiescent hepatocyte start. We don't have much hepatocyte proliferation. We don't have an immune system that is trying to get rid of the virus, producing high level of inflammation. But this is not the reality in a chronically infected liver. So actually, while the CCC DNA seems to be very stable, we probably live so long as the hepatocytes lives as a mini chromosome in the cells. But the situation in the, in the chronic liver inflammation might be quite different. If we have immune mediated cell injury, killing of some hepatocytes, which needs to promote also compensatory cell growth. So how this type of situation affect this virus? and it's particularly the CCC DNA. Actually, it might be that when the cell divides, this type of episomal, this mini chromosome, circular mini chromosome is diluted, is lost. So that's why we thought with this type of mice, we might try to push expansion of primary human hepatocytes, which is actually is very difficult to do this in vitro. You end up with cells that are not anymore primary hepatocytes, unfortunately. So what we have done, yeah, these are our mice, we inject the cells, we infect the mice. And when the mice were stably infected, we isolated, we made a liver perfusion of the mouse, and we isolated the infected hepatocytes again and transplanted in new naive recipient mice. We could observe actually a very nice expansion of primary human hepatocytes in these mice. And what happened to the CCC DNA, to the infection in general? We observed a Clear loss, more than two log of copy of CCC DNA per hepatocytes, and you can calculate this, but also in a, a net loss, a full loss of in the liver at some, to some extent, indicating so that CNAP, while the hepatocytes were growing, was partially, was diluted, quite you can imagine maybe in this picture, diluted among the other cells and also in part lost. If we look at the histology, these are very early, three days after cellular transplantation. We still see core antigen positive cells. And then one month later, we have cluster of expanded hepatocytes, but the core antigen staying in the hepatic viral marker are almost gone. Six, 60 day, 
So 30 days, 60 days, two months, we have a large class that have very little viral marker. But if we wait even longer, then the virus is back, it's coming back again. So we didn't achieve complete cisne eradication. And later, actually, when the proliferation was again relented, so stopped almost, then the virus was somehow showing up again. What actually we also actually, Lena Alvarez, the postdoc in, in my group, have done a very careful analysis of these mice and these livers. And actually, what she observed that uh, we had some very few hepatocytes, which appeared simply didn't grow. And probably in some of these cells that were not enough growing, actually the virus survived and served as reservoir. And obviously, later on, we had again a new infection of uh, hepatocytes that actually managed to clear in the first place the viruses. And then it's coming again the entry inhibitor or approach it to block again entry new infection events. This is the viral marker of the CCC DNA fate as we measure in the liver one month. And then at the end, we have again a higher level of CCC DNA. You can see here new infection. But if we added the entry inhibitor, we could protect from the new infection event. So we had real clearance and we could protect the cells from new infection event. Again, suggested in actually this type of strategy, block new infection, protect the uh, hepatocyte cured, that were cured, is uh, quite critical, also in the new concept of uh, therapeutic approaches. So I would like to summarize uh, this um, main part, actually, and what we could observe so far uh, using this type of approaches. Well, certainly cell division is a real weak kind of weak point in the for HPV persistence. Cell turnover and agent that promotes cell killing contribute to its destabilization. But you have to be careful not to kill too much cells at one point if you are working with patients. And uh, also that, that it is possible to actually to silence, to suppress the CCC DNA activity, even with drugs that are not that far from our reach, maybe. Um, but again, there is a big hope, the new strategy that actually if we have silencing of the CCT, then we might have a partial restoration of some immune responses or therapeutic vaccination strategy might work better. But again, as I said in the beginning, half-life really of this molecule is not clear. And uh, also the power combination therapy is not clear at how effective they can be in patients. So it's very interesting time, but there are a lot of patients for company to stay tuned and to have a very sophisticated trial design to achieve sustained uh, viral suppression, which is very, very difficult. Um, and again, the contribution of integration in producing X, that will be a problem, and also of the envelope protein. And now I would like to come to the last part, actually, to uh, mention the other virus. I was mentioning the problem of hepatitis D virus. We have much less drug to fight this chronic infection. And now we thought, okay, well, what about the impact of cell division on this virus that replicate also in the nucleus? And actually what we have done, first an in vitro approach, you can see these are just the hepatoma cell line that can be infected because they are transduced with the NTCP receptor. And what we observed, if we have first a random infection, um, so the, the purple points are just delta antigen that you can see random in the, on the, in the plates. And if you split the cells several times, you can really observe nice cluster of delta positive cells, HDB positive cells, telling us that actually we, and we have done this also using a kind of cell uh, marking, lentivirus, uh, arborin, RGB marking. And you can see actually that as the clonal expansion of some, hep uh, some hepatocytes of hepatoma cells occurs, we have the expansion of the, of the delta positive, uh, HDB positive hepatocytes. In vivo, we have done the same. We again the same procedure as uh, for the HBV. We had HBV HDV co-infected mice actually, 
and we perform cellular transplantation, and we monitor over the weeks the cluster, and we observe that actually opposite to what we observe with HBV, even using the entry inhibitor to avoid new infection events, we could see the propagation persisting of HDV while cells expand. So in other words, we can see that we have two different consequences for cell in cell division, this context of cell division. From one side, we have persistence of HDV while cells grow, and we lose the CCC DNA. What does this type of implication? It might be that HDV persists in a cell lacking the CCC DNA. Shouldn't be this a dead end for HDV? We can say, who cares? We will not come out. At some point, we'll die, the cells and the virus. And this coming to the final point, actually, this is complex. It is complex because maybe targeting the CCC DNA might have some limitation regarding the fate of HDV in chronic infected patients. And the point is, maybe you can try to see on this type of cartoons, uh, actually what we have, at the beginning we have a lot of B and a lot of Delta viruses, but when proliferation turnover of cell occurs, I explained we have good evidence and also patient biopsy tell us this, uh, we have very little amount of CCC DNA in this liver, but the problem is uh, that the HDV will persist the cell division. And, and here comes the new component, the big role probably of S antigen of HPV envelopes that are coming from integration. The virus, HPV might have lost the CCC DNA, but if it left integrated sequence in producing the envelope, then still the delta will be able to propagate in this liver. So making this kind of very complex, heterogeneous, heterogeneous type of liver the situation that we might have in chronic hepatitis delta patients. So it means that the reduction of S antigen also from integration and block of new infection events may really be crucial also for the therapy against chronic hepatitis delta, but still we need better models and also to study uh, more detailed uh, liver biopsy of patients that receive new therapy. So let me come to the conclusion. I show you that somehow human liver chimeric mice, this human type of human mice, permit to do HPV, HDV infection study, entry to monitor spreading capacity, also different variant of viruses. We might be able to investigate uh, how this virus impact affect the innate responses, topic they didn't touch today at all, of the hepatocytes, also how they interfere with metabolic pathways, and also with the host uh, genome, like the virus that integrates in the host genome, obviously for preclinical study, and also to investigate uh, the fate of different virus in the context of cell division. But also might be interesting to investigate other type of factor that might affect hepatocyte turnover in general. It might also for going to the direction of metabolic and cancer uh, diseases approaches. Some immunotherapy act are possible actually if we do adoptive, we have done already adoptive transfer of T cells in these mice, but of course with all the limitation that we have doing adoptive transfer of some immune cells. And definitely if you want to study vaccine response, some other, liver pathology that needs to have complex immune responses, then you we are still bound to the other system, immune competent uh, mouse models. And again, we're still lacking good model to study the impact of infection and also of integration um, in system harboring HPV integration. And I think that with that, I would like to thanks first of all, of course, for the data that we generated a member of uh, my group, uh, Tassilo Potts, is the postdoc that is taking care a lot of generating uh, these mice, um, accompanied by uh, Alika Formari. The, um, the HPV part is very much, most of the work has been done by Lena Alvais and uh, by Katja Giersch and Mark Lutgeitman, the part of the study on the Delta. 
And of course, uh, the, um, the work with the entry inhibitor was that been that impossible with the great collaboration we have since many years within the German Center of Infection Research with Stefan Orlap in, uh, in Heidelberg. Um, and of course, uh, the different kinds of collaborators that we have uh, um, around the, the world, I would say. And obviously, thank you for your attention. <laughs>